Yes, it sure does, Anthony. And Kate, we're going to start off with Cadillac, right? Obviously, he's a very good two-year-old, but uh, we only saw him twice uh, last season, but he remains in training this year. Yeah, no, we saw he was a very good winner at the Curra at the beginning of last season, and then um, we went to Amer- Amer- America with him, and then he came back uh, to France as well, and he just, you know... He was good this day, but I just don't think we ever really had him right. He's come back this season like a different horse. He's actually... I ne- we never thought last year he did very well from two to three, but he's done really well from three to four. He's grown, he's filled out, he's done everything we probably wanted him to do last winter, but he's done it this winter and his work at home has been good. He's stepped forward again and he was real gutsy uh, this day at the Curra to win. Yes, Harson's second was Dawn Patrol in the colours of Lyde Williams. And he got the trip really well over a mile and a quarter, didn't he? Yeah, no, he certainly did. And uh, he's going to start um, off in Leopardstown, uh, not this week, next week. And um, he's ready to go. He was at Nace on Monday for a race course gallop. OK, and obviously his two-year-old form is very good as well. Well, he's fourth or fifth in a, in a Jew horse mm-hmm. behind St Mark's Basilica. And he's... <sighs> Disappointing last year. You yeah. have to say he was pretend disappointing for us last year, but I think we've got him in a much, much better place uh, going into this season. OK, what's his long-term targets for this season? I'd say he'll keep, he, stay here and kind of mix it in between Group 3s and Group 2s and we'll see how he goes from there to build him back up possibly to Group 1 in the autumn. Mile and a quarter, is that as far as he'll... Is that... Nine mile, nine, uh, mile and a quarter probably is his maximum yeah. and Shane kind of thinks nine is probably his best. OK, and he's in the alleged stakes. Yes, he's in the alleged and that's where he'll start. That'll be his first run yeah. of the season. OK, that's Cadillac. For the next one we're going to have a look at is Magical Lagoon. Yeah, Magical Lagoon, we were, um, of course, she broke her maiden when, by winning the Flame of Tara um, up at the Curra. And, you know, possibly we're a little bit disappointed with her um, in the mile, but she was just a little bit in Newmarket. She was just a bit r- ring rusty or didn't quite have the experience of the others and didn't come down the hill. But I love the way she did it this day. OK, smart filly that was uh, in... Uh was second that day was Albula who of course beat her in a maiden didn't she? Yeah Albula beat her in a maiden and we just see her as soon as she gets to the outside she starts to hit top gear and you know this filly when she steps up in in trip again this year she's going to be coming to her own and um, she's definitely just going to have, she's not going to go to any guineas or anything, she's going to be very much targeted um, a pathway towards the Oaks and she's a filly it just she'll obviously learn plenty from that that was only her second run mm. four long and a half down you look like she's going to finish third or fourth but she was quite green wasn't she she certainly changed is, her legs and was a little bit all over the place she's kind of at home she does everything so easy and um, just goes through the motions and you know we have to train her quite hard to get her fit and she comes here for her first start in the salsa bill here in a couple of weeks and uh, you know she's her long term target, target is going to be the Oaks whether we go to Ingl- uh, to Newmarket first but it, at the moment we're going to build her up towards um, sorry Epsom I mean Epsom, um, yeah. Epsom I mean I was thinking of the movie Oaks this year <laughs> uh, uh, Epsom I mean uh, but she does hold an entry in that but I'd say the Curra is going to be her main target for the Oaks there. ok that's Magical Lagoon the next one we're going to have a look at is one of the uh Right now, what are we looking at next? Is it forbearance? Is Admirality. Next? Admirality place. Right, why did this horse make the grade? He ran a cracker first start for you. Cameron and his wife, Teresa, on him. They run a cracker, just got run out of a close home at the Curra in the opening maiden. Yeah, I just, I really liked the attitude. We we haven't had him, we've had him about two weeks and we haven't had him over that long and I think he was definitely going to come um, improve from this run and uh, you know I just love the way he travelled into the race and um, he travelled into it like a real good horse he was giving the rest 14 pounds the first and second and you know I just love the way he did it he's going to improve a ton for it and um, I think he's a horse that's going to step when we can break his maiden go and step up into um, group and listed company and um, no problem to him and of course the horse in front here in Jackie Bulger's colours is Boundless Ocean mm. He had a high rating last year. He's a horse with a big reputation. He started a very short price favourite the other afternoon. And the eventual winner in the Yamor Sills for the weekend they had. This comes and uh, wins a close home. But this horse was well touted as well, making his debut for Michael O'Callaghan. Yeah, I feel like it was a, an above average maiden. And he 
um, ran cre- to credit to him by giving them a weight, giving them a lot of weight, and he'll certainly improve from it. And I just think he could be a little bit of a dark horse. Okay, we're going to see him in a maiden in the next couple of weeks. Seven, seven furlongs again. Seven furlongs again. He shows plenty of pace. Okay, the next one we're going to have a look at is uh, Discovery. She needs no introduction. <laughs> How's she done over the winter? She's done really, really well, and um, we couldn't be happy with her at the moment. The plan possibly is to go straight to Newmarket, but we'll see how she progresses over the next couple of weeks and if we're going to go there or go straight to the Irish Guineas. Of course, this filly was well touted of making her debut in a maiden that was won by uh, the smart filly of uh, Ger Lines' uh, grey filly by Dark Angel mm. who of course bolted up in the first listed race of the year. That was in Dundalk a couple of weeks ago and uh, then she came out and uh, chased home Agartha in the debutant stakes but really turned the form with her uh, around in the mild glare. Yeah, she certainly did. Um, it was a bit too soft for her in the debutant. She's a filly a bit like um, Alpha Centuri. She loves to rattle um, on good ground and we had beautiful good ground here in the Moy glare and you know she's... Uh, it's funny, Debbie who rides her out every day always says it's like she's going on to the gallop for the first time each time, uh, each day because she's just so, she's just so gormless. She just shies and she spooks and at everything and, you know, I feel like the penny really was only starting to drop with her here and she's a, a filly that loves to just bowl along. You know, Shane just sat up sides in front and let her roll into top gear uh, coming down to the furlong pole and she just kept on finding for him. And she's still a little bit green as well. Mm. She's changed her legs, ran around a little bit, but she really points that toss. She likes really good good ground, doesn't she? Yeah, she really does. Just like um, Alpha Centuri loves to loves good ground, and you know she's developed well. You can see her there, like even o- above Agartha. She's a big framed filly, and not quite as big as Alpha, but she's a big framed filly, and I think she's got very strong over the winter. And uh, Debbie couldn't be happy with her. Shane couldn't be happier with her. So um, we'll make a plan with the Niarcos family in the coming weeks. OK, does it look like she goes straight for the Guineas? Looks like either be it English or Irish Guineas, but she'll go straight there. No trial in, mm. in between. She's going to have to carry a group one penalty if she goes mm. um, to one of them. So we, we're f- uh, pretty confident that we can get her ready at home. OK, another filly we're going to, another individual we're going to have a look at. The next one is for Bairns. Now, this filly really <laughs> progressed up along the ranks last year. I remember when she won off uh, her handicap mark off 76 and she ended up finishing the season uh, winning the uh, Princess Royal, wasn't it? The Group 3 at Newmarket off a mark of 104. She won the Galtra Stakes at York uh, in between her runs. Yeah, she certainly did. You know, I think she, this time last year she was only breaking her maiden up in Dundalk and she really, really progressed. This is a, another filly you can see there she's um, on the back foot the whole way and just in the middle part of the race when they really quickened it up here in Newmarket um, she was found a little bit flat footed but as soon as she meets the rising ground she quickens up really really well and a mile and four is potentially uh, her best trip but she got an entry for a mile and a quarter race uh, for Ailes and Upwards Phillies race in um, York um, in in their May festival so we could see her start off there if they have good ground and regards ground, she seems versatile. She's one with a good ease in the ground. She's one in quick ground. She's one in good ground also. Yeah, I'd say though, even though she has one with an ease in it, um, quick, the quicker the ground, the better for her. And there could be more to come from her because just watching her again winning the uh, Princess Ryle, as soon as she hits the front, she, she parks, doesn't yeah, she? Yeah, her ears are pricked and uh, no, she's a lovely filly. And you know, if anything, she's got bigger and stronger this year. Adrian, who's riding her out, is really, really happy with her and uh, she's on target for wherever we go with her. Okay, and is there a long term plan with this filly? Potentially she could, albeit it is only a mile and a quarter, the Pretty Polly could be on her target. And then if we did get a good summer, um, there's the Group 1 um, for four-year-old and upwards fillies a mile and a half in France as well. But that would be a little bit dodgy because they can always turn up with a bit of an ease in it there. OK, the last one we're going to have a look at uh, is Real Appeal. Yeah, Real Appeal, he probably progressed his way through the season last year. Loves Leopardstown, seven furlongs around the bend. Um, and he then went to the Breeders' Cup. We were a shade disappointed with him there, but he did pick up a little bit of an injury. Um, so he's a little bit behind maybe so the others um, fitness-wise, but he will um, make a reappearance probably when the ground gets a bit better. OK, and seven furlongs is his ideal trip, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, seven is his ideal trip. A mile possibly stretches him. He was... Say, he was he won this over a mile, uh, but it is he is just a real hold-up horse. Um, 
for Shane for Shane and he loves he absolutely loves Leopard, Leopardstown left handed round the bend yeah this is the Boomerang Mile the group 2 um, champions uh, weekend as well but he had a really good gallop to aim at didn't you? yeah they went a right good gallop and um, you can see him there he's only got three horses behind him but as soon as Shane gets after him he picks up really well and um, he comes through the field and uh, runs out a real nice winner and uh, it was a real competitive race this but he's another horse that likes real quick ground and uh, the quicker it is the better for him good stuff that's uh, the horse that have ran no I'm not <laughs> going to let you away that easy because there'll be plenty of viewers watching in get a couple of two year olds off Kate Harrington uh, you couldn't have got off the off to a better start as your two-year-olds. You wanted a nice uh, two-year-old the opening race of the season. Would have been unlucky if she got beat because uh, through no fault of Shane Foley or that, she just, he had to wait for a gap to open. But I really like the turn of foot she showed and she's hit the line really well. Yeah, she hit the line, her line very well and her homework was very good. And she even had a little stumble as well, um, a furlong down. And I just love the way she did it. And uh, she's going to go for the Group 3 um, in Nice, the Phillies Group 3, in a couple of weeks' time. OK. Okay, of the other two-year-olds, right, you've only run, what, <laughs> one? OK, you have a big team of two-year-olds. Give Try a couple of names there for the viewers at home to uh, watch out for. You have a two-year-old entered at Cork on Sunday, I see. Uh, yeah, uh, Panic Alarm, he's in Cork on Sunday. He's been doing things um, very nicely. Oh, sorry, Polo Bear is in, <laughs> hold the piece. Polo Bear is in on uh, Sunday and he's been doing things really nicely. He's a son of Cody Bear and just like he does things easy enough, he's worked with Ocean Quest, does things very very nicely and um, we have another filly it's Showtime Baby in Dundalk on Friday she does things very nicely um, but there's a few other real exciting ones the horse called Saturn of course he's the first foal by Galileo out of Alpha Centauri and we probably won't see him to the middle half but he's just very very exciting kind of takes my makes me smile every day okay. I see him Saturn yeah okay anything else uh, Saturn we've got um, I mentioned Panic Alarm there he's a lovely son of Caruccio um, and he does things really nicely he won't be he'll be out in the next two weeks or so and um, there's Keeping Up With My Empire a lovely Holy Roman Cult there's a lot of lovely horses our bubble hasn't been burst just yet we've had one runner one winner so uh, let's hope they can all keep going like that and it's just great as well it just gives you a, basically a, a benchmark to work off doesn't it when you're you know and you've a lot of nice two year olds at home you're, not, you're half thinking well they can't all be nice or you know yeah. are they and then when the first one goes and wins it just gives you confidence then doesn't it give you a sense of benchmark yeah it certainly does I remember a couple of years ago when we had um Kay and Pepper, Albania and uh, Alpine Star, all all those good two-year-olds. And I remember Shane saying one morning, they're either all very good or they're all useless. And I think they all turned up to be nearly Group 1 fillies. OK, exciting times ahead for Team Harrington and uh, some plenty of names uh, of some two-year-olds to look forward to as well. Uh, Kate has just mentioned also. Anthony, I hope you had your pen and paper out and took down some of those unraced two-year-olds' names as well. And uh, thanks for Kate for an in-depth look at some of our horses that have uh, our form horses from uh, from last year, Anthony.